Hello and welcome. Every year, music lovers flock to South Africa to enjoy the joy of jazz. It's a collaboration between local and international musicians. Entrepreneur Peter Tladi is the man behind the popular event. His journey to success dates back to March 1960 when he survived the infamous Sharpeville massacre. The events that followed shaped Peter to be the powerful businessman he is today. A fateful afternoon in March 1960. Loud bursts of gunshots rang across the township of Sharpeville. I remember that my mother had to take me and my brother. We walked from Shavl to run away from what was happening. On foot, 10-year-old Peter Tladi and his family journeyed 40 kilometers to seek refuge in Everton. When we got to Everton, we met the same thing. We met the, 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 the guns, the soldiers around and all, and the planes were flying all over the place. They had no choice but to stay there for the next few years. Apartheid South Africa was the only world little Peter knew. I was a kid. At one point I thought it's normal that things must be like that. Born into a poor family, Peter spent his early years sleeping on the kitchen floor. His family lived off his father's meager salary, only 20 rand a week. But even with so little money, his dad wasn't afraid to spend. He used to bring vinyl record every Friday when he got paid. We used to have piles and piles of vinyl music from such great, such great as um, the Manhattan Brothers, Mira Makeba. This unintentional investment paid off. The records kindled Peter's lifelong passion for music. From then on, I didn't stop. You know, I didn't stop. I went back and listened to music even more. In 1966, Peter and his family moved to Sibukeng, where he joined a jazz group. Performing at local festivals brought some happiness to Peter in the midst of his hard life in the township. You forget a little about the hunger back home. You become involved in this, you know, in the festive mood. But then when you finish there, you go back to reality. And things are tough. You, it, sometimes I would come and there would be nothing there. My mother would say, oh, make tea, I have tea. There's no one have tea and um, the crust of the pup. So Peter made his way to Johannesburg in search of something better. I used to carry a novel, James Hartley Chase, and stand there and ask for a lift, go in there without money to come back. In the city, Peter met with the African Musicians and Drummers Association. The organization enrolled him in a music school free of charge. But Peter found real opportunities in an unexpected place. Downstairs from the music school, he was recruited to do marketing for a production company. And that's where my lessons got lost because once I got in there, yes, it was activity, overactivity, overactivity. From a musician, Peter turned into a businessman, slowly working his way to the top. In 1987, he joined the international record company EMI, eventually becoming its first black director. It was during those times that I saw an opportunity that 
the artists in this country, the black artists, don't have manager. Two years later, Peter started his own company, Team Music Men, to provide South African artists with quality management. He worked with great names like Hugh Masigela, Rebecca Malope, and Sipo Hotstex Mabuse. When he started Team Music Man, the first thing that Peter and I did was to do a voter awareness campaign, you know, and we started doing little festivals around the country. Former President Nelson Mandela, you know, graced us with his greatness at this, and he came and you came to see the show. Years of experience in showbiz, and then Peter created one of the largest annual international live music events, the Standard Bank Joy of Jazz. For us, it means that at least there is something that we look up to uh, somewhere in the year when, 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 we, when we know that Joy of Jazz is there. We know that at least there, there will be a plate on the table. I've always maintained that he probably must be conferred with a doctorate, you know, in, in terms of how to promote music in this country and also accord and extend respect to the musicians, be they local or international. Peter treats musicians the same way. The Joy of Jazz Festival celebrates its 14th anniversary this year and will be in Newtown, Johannesburg in August. Send us your feedback and let us know what you think against all odds at enca.com. You can also be in touch with us on Twitter and Facebook. Still to come, a former school teacher wants South Africans to know that small acts of kindness can make a big difference. News that moves. ENCA.com.